Good afternoon and welcome to the Mariah Systems webinar. Before we get started, I wanted to go over a couple of housekeeping items. First, if you're having any technical difficulties, please let me know via chat or you can text me on my cell, which is 267-987-5863. If you have any questions or need any follow-up, please call me on that number or email me at the contact information that's going to be listed at the end of the presentation. Also, if you have any questions, Sean Scott's information will be listed there as well. So let me go over the agenda. Today we're going to be talking about intelligent capture and um, what, it is, what it is and why DataCap is such a great product. Sean Scott's going to be doing a demonstration for you of the product. And I'll start off with some slides introducing intelligent capture and data cap, as well as a few customer examples. We'll then talk about next steps and do a Q&A session. Sean's going to be doing a presentation for you, uh, or uh, he's going to be doing a demo for you, um, and he's going to be going over data cap and exactly what it is and uh, show you the AP product. So introductions, my name is Beatrice Heiner, I'm the sales executive here at Mariah Systems and along with me is Sean Scott. Sean is our DataCap technical consultant here. Uh, Sean has a deep knowledge of DataCap as well as FileNet. A little about Mariah Systems. We have been a strategic IBM premier partner for 15 years, a DataCap partner for six years, and we have literally delivered over 100 solutions that have helped different organizations with their business processes. Some of the industries that we work with are manufacturing, banking, insurance, energy, and government. If you'd like more information on Mariah Systems, please feel free to visit us at mariahsystems.com. Now let's go into the DataCap overview. So DataCap was acquired by IBM in August of 2010, and Mariah has been a partner uh, for, with DataCap for over six years, so we're a partner prior to the acquisition. IBM made a strategic decision to purchase DataCap to strengthen its leadership position within the ECM space. And now with the release of version 8, IBM has totally integrated DataCap into its suite of products. Now, when you look at the verticals, you can see the data caps utilized in a wide variety of industries. And some of these industries are the same where Mariah has expertise. DataCap Taskmaster 8.0 provides functionality that includes departmental, branch, and uh, network web-based functionality. It has extensive reporting capabilities. This is great for management because it allows the manager to see how many documents or batches someone's processed. One of the main differences between DataCap and its competitors is the user-based pricing. DataCap is not a per-image or per-click model. It is a per-user licensing model. Again, it has some of the same robust configurable solutions um, and DataCap is uh, easily configured, so some of the burden of, uh, off of IT is removed. DataCap is available on a thin or thick client. The thin client is a web-based application that's easily deployed and is truly a scalable enterprise solution where a document from anywhere in the world can be scanned, verified, and then stored in a content repository or any other back-end solution that you may have. Enterprise Capture allows you to input from multiple sources. It accommodates paper, fax, email, and electronic documents, which you can see here in this, um, in this slide. It offers many recognition methods, automated I uh, document ID, validations, and productivity features. Now, after handling all the variety of document input, and assuring accurate data extraction. It delivers data and documents to all other systems that power your enterprise. Rule Runner Service empowers customers to orchestrate and capture processes, pick and choose OCR engines, lookups, releases, all without programming. Um, this slide gives you an idea of what the capture process looks like. 
We are taking documents that have been faxed, mailed, or emailed in and scanning them or importing them into the system for OCR, ICR, and OMR and barcode recognition as well as verification and processing. At this point, the document is also being skewed and cleaned up for easy viewing. The information extracted and or the document can then be stored in a variety of systems including FileNet where it is easily retrieved. I want to talk to you a little bit about some of the uh, things that we've done. The first is an investment firm um, and they have been doing a lot with online transactions. They have to have hardware people and, in, and people in place and they also need a distributive solution. So the solution um, translated uh, the management of the supplier quotes. So here it is connected to their Maxima system on the back end. The new process enhanced the supplier quotes capt and captured everything centrally and allows them a, stream, uh, a streamlined and front end process. So here is what it looks like and here's what that process looks like. It shows you where the information was coming from, the format like it was received in, so fax or email, and then ingested into the data cap system, processed, and then stored into Maximo so that it can be finalized and, um, and sent to the end client. Another example is a healthcare organization. So, you know, in today's world, we're all familiar with the signing of the HIPAA forms and handing over driver's licenses. So, you know, these are all due to new regulations. Um, so here we're talking about a healthcare organization. They had data entry errors and, and backlogs. They had entry error, double entry. They were losing documents. And you can imagine in that when you're trying to get all the claims forms and things for one individual, sometimes it would take quite a while to find these things. So DataCap Taskmaster helped process the claims forms by capturing all the fields on the forms along with all the associated attachments. It looks up the diagnosis codes or CP codes, handles the math calculations, and is HIPAA compliant. So the new process allows for a much simpler claim payment process by comparing captured data against the database. CP to CPT codes can be matched to the diagnosis code and the zip code or something like that can be matched to the city and so on. So after the data has been verified, it is forwarded to a HIPAA compliant 837 EDI format and then the images are uploaded and stored for retrieval by the customer service representatives. So now Taskmaster Medical claim is available in both the thin and the thick clients and allows for local and remote scanning and verification. So all the data and the documents from this went directly into a file net system as you can see here. Um, here the data or the document could trigger a workflow and from this point could store their documents. Um, it is totally dependent on the client and the business process that they have in place as to where they're stored. Now Mariah Systems has done many different types of file net projects. So not only are we a data cap expert, we are also file net experts. So the file net projects include installs, upgrades, and migrations. And we have built um, a product called Manage Pay, which is used in the accounts payable pro process along with uh, file net and data cap. So let's talk a little about ta DataCap Taskmaster Accounts Payable. Sean's going to be doing a demonstration of this. So DataCap Accounts Payable is utilized by organizations to help reduce or eliminate data entry and automatically calculate both line items as well as total math calculations. Taskmaster AP can work with ERP systems like SAP to do data lookup and auto-populate vendor name, address, PO number, and data types. Only exceptions to this process are sent to the operator for review. The operator will then verify the information and make any changes needed and then process the batch. Any exceptions are routed to management for review and change. Taskmaster AP has reporting capability at the management level so that there's a clear picture of where all invoices are within the process as well as monitoring the output from each operator. 
So this gives you an idea of what that product looks like. Sean's now going to go in and do a demonstration and uh, show you some invoices and how they go through the accounts payable process with DataCap. So at this point, I'm going to turn uh, this over to Sean. Thank you, Beatrice, and good afternoon, everyone. My name is Sean Patrick Scott. I'm a pre-sales engineer with Mariah Systems. And as Beatrice said, I'm going to go through a quick demonstration of how you can automatically extract invoice information from paper invoices to be automatically uploaded to your ERP system and store the documents in your content repository. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and scan in these docket, these type of invoices so you can see what we're scanning in. And then what I'm going to do is launch the DataCap software. Now this is DataCap Taskmaster. This is the typical user interface that a user would see when they log in to Taskmaster. This window is broken up into two different categories. One is the operations window. That shows what applications I have access to as part of the DataCap Taskmaster application. Because I'm logged in as administrator, I have access to the scanning functions, the document and data verification functions, as well as some system administrator functions like the background processing and the export application. So typically, a scan operator, when they would scan in, or would they would log in, they would see the scan icon. Your data validation people most likely would just see the verification or application. Or you might have an organization where both the scanning and verification is done by the same individual. The window below is what we call the job monitor. That shows all of the outstanding batches that are being processed by DataCap and allows users to, and administrators to modify the background processing that is going on with DataCap. It shows all the batches that are outstanding and available for processing. So I'm going to log in as a verifier and click on a batch that we've scanned in and I'm going to display all the data that we've extracted from the paper invoices that were scanned in. So you can see here this is what we call the data verification screen. This allows me to display all the data that we were able to collect when we actually OCR'd the document and the invoices. On the right hand side you can see there's an image viewer. I have the ability to zoom in on the image, display information of the document that was scanned in. On the left hand side we have the data entry or data verification screens. The top portion, you'll see it's invoice header information that was automatically extracted by our background OCR process. Down below, it has line item detail information that was extracted automatically off of the invoice line items. So let me show this interface in a little bit more detail. Here I have my data entry fields for the invoice header. You can see we're capturing the remittance zip code, the invoice type, invoice date, invoice number, tax information, total information, and PO number information. In this area is what we call the data entry area. This is a field where I can go ahead and type in information or it's used for data cap to display the document that was automatically captured without any data entry. So in this case it's the remittance zip code. Directly above the data entry area field there's what we call a snippet. This is basically a cut and paste of the image where we've extracted that information or where the OCR engine had found that information. So when I click on the remit zip code, you can see in the image viewer, it's highlighting in blue the area that we've extracted. And again, above the data entry, you can see the cut and paste of that area so that the end user that's verifying the data doesn't necessarily need to look at the image viewer. They can look directly above the data entry area and quickly find the information that it needs to be verified. Now one thing you'll notice is that all of these fields are in the color blue or teal where one field down here is in yellow. What we do is we color coordinate 
the data that was extracted by the confidence level that the OCR engine was able to read it in. So blue means it was greater than 95% confidence level. We have the ability to adjust that confidence level as we go. If we wanted to make sure it was 99%, we can adjust that level. Again, we can lower it below that. Um, and we can also do data validation based on some background processing. And I'll, I'll explain that in a little more detail. In this case, you can see the field is in yellow. That's saying that it fell below the 95% confidence level, and I want to deliver this item to the end user just to verify that the data was read correctly because it's under our 95% confidence level. So an end user would typically um, have to just verify the data was read correctly. So in this case, we read it as 20, 2,100, and it's asking me because this character is in red, it's asking me that we've read it below 95% confidence level and just to verify that. It's possible it could be a 7. We want to make sure that it's a 1. So we actually deliver that to the end user just to verify that that is correct. So I had mentioned something about data validation. Even though we read that as 2100, we can actually do math calculations on the data to verify that it was read correctly and possibly not deliver this document to an end user for verification. And what I mean by that is we have business logic in here to take the quantity amount that was read on the line item, multiply it by the price to see if it equals the line total. If that equals, we might say, okay, let's not deliver that to the end user. Let's assume that we read that with 100% accuracy and do not deliver that to an end user. So that's what I mean by doing data validation and some arithmetic associated with a line item transaction. We also do field validation by which we validate that this line total is an actual currency amount. If it doesn't have a decimal place and two trailing characters, we would say that that is not a valid currency. Same thing with date. If it's not in an MMDD YYYY format, we'll highlight that in red to say this is an invalid date. And I'll show you an example of how that exists in our system. Now, what you haven't seen behind the scenes is when we read in this paper information, we were automatically OCRing the information as well as doing document cleanup and uh, what we call image enhancement. So we will despeckle the document, and that takes out all the background noise. We'll also remove line, uh, line and graph information so that we're able to read the information more accurately. And what I mean by that, you can see the original invoice has this box around the line item details. We automatically strip that out so that we're able to read the information behind it with better accuracy. So we go ahead and clean up line information, background noise information. We straighten out the image, uh, which we mean by de-skewing it, and storing it in a format now that we're able to maximize our recognition engine. You have the ability to store either the original or the modified. In most cases, you will store the original. But in, in, in order for us to uh, maximize the recognition, we do some background processing. So now I've validated all of the data. And you can see now this field is in our blue color, which means everything has been validated from the line total. But we also validate that the fact that the line total equals the invoice total plus shipping plus the tax amount. If for some reason this value was off, it would be highlighted in red. And I can quickly show that if I change this amount and go through validation. It just told me that the validation failed, that my line totals do not equal the invoice total plus the tax. So you can see here we have validation built in for processing that if an end user were to change something. Also, we have the ability to go through each line item to view that information. And if you could see here in the image viewer, as we go from line item to line item, you could see it's highlighted in the image viewer, and we can validate all of the data. So again, I'm going to go ahead and just validate that the data is correct. And it is. Everything is in the color blue. So I'm going to go ahead and process this invoice. 
Now here's another invoice that has popped up. You can see we were able to read in all five line items with 100% accuracy. We were able to read the invoice number, all of the header information, and we're able to read that with 100% accuracy. So in most cases when you were to use the Taskmaster software, you would extract this data and pump it automatically into your ERP system without any human intervention so that you're able to post that transaction line item by line item or PO number by PO number. So I'm going to go ahead and process this invoice. Now for this invoice you could see one field came up as red, one field came up as yellow. Red means that it was it did not pass validation. And you could see here the date is marked as a leap year day when in fact in 2009 it was not a leap year so I'm going to go ahead and modify this to 2012 which is a leap year to correct that data check to see if it passes validation and it does so my date is correct and now you can see all of this information is now in green so I'm going to go ahead and process this invoice and again here's another invoice where they just want us to verify this field in yellow actually has a hyphen in that it's not a minus sign or anything along those lines and you can see the system read all of that information with 100 percent accuracy so I'm going to go ahead and process this document now for this latest document this is a new vendor that came in our system we haven't seen this before. We, um, for the first time we're going to process this, we want to go ahead and what we call create a fingerprint. Now a fingerprint is a way that we store documents in the di DataCat library that tells us information about that document. And that information is exactly where in the document the information is located. So for instance, uh, for remittance zip code, if I click on remittance zip code, I'm able to simply go down the invoice, look for the remittance zip code, click on that value, and if you notice, I just clicked on the image viewer, it automatically extracted that data of that zone that we selected, as well as it automatically OCR'd the information. You can see here, when I clicked on it, it put in my data entry area the actual data that was read by the OCR engine. Now what I'm going to do is say because this is a new vendor, I'm going to click this button and that says this is a new fingerprint. Remember where you found that zip code and store that so that the next time that this vendor submits an invoice, we automatically read it with 100% accuracy or close to 100% accuracy because we already know where all that information is stored on that vendor's invoice. We also have the ability to do database lookup we actually want to look up this vendor in our vendor master table by just typing in a couple of characters for that vendor click the lookup button and you can see here here's a couple of entries that begin with ST in my vendor master so I'm going to go ahead and select the vendor and if you see it automatically brought back the vendor number from our vendor master table in most cases your vendors will not pu publish your internal vendor number on their invoices but you may need that information for processing in your ERP system. So we're able to do database lookups both from the user interface as well as the background processing after OCR. So if you notice the other examples of invoices I had automatically pulled that vendor number and we were able to do that by OCRing the vendor number, I'm sorry, the remittance zip code and the vendor name and doing a lookup in our vendor master table behind the scenes to pull back the vendor number and display that as part of the invoice information. So it's a very powerful tool. You can also see here the OCR engine automatically found the invoice total information as well as the shipping amount. Even though this is a two-page document, it scanned the whole document and was able to find the invoice total and the shipping amount by looking for these tags, shipping colon and total colon. So it automatically extracted that. We didn't have to enter that information. But because this is a new vendor, we're not exactly sure of where the line, items inf uh, line item information is stored. 
So what I'm going to go ahead and do is create what we call the fingerprint for that line item. And I'm going to click on the line item field, say item ID, and just simply click on the image viewer where that item ID is stored. So now Taskmaster software will remember that exact location for that field. Same thing for quantity. I'm going to go ahead and click on quantity and it's going to automatically remember where that information is. It's going to automatically create what we call the snippet for data entry for that field as well as automatically OCR that information. Now I'm going to just click on the item description for the first line item. I'm going to click on the price for the first line item and of course I'm going to click on the line total for the first line item. Now if you notice I didn't do any data entry I just simply clicked on the image where that information is stored so that Taskmaster will remember those locations and automatically read it the next time. Not only does it read it the next time but right now I can click the find details button and what that's going to do is based on that first line item that I clicked on it's going to find all the other line item information. If you see, we went from one line item to 23 line items by just clicking on the Find Details button. So there I was able to enter 23 line items by not entering one piece of information but just clicking on the first line item in the invoice. And if you want to view the data, I can click on the View Details and look at all of the information that the DataCAD Taskmaster software automatically brought back. And I can validate that data. If I want to go ahead and click on a particular item that I just read, I can click on that and it will take me directly to that item. As you can see, we could just go through and validate the data, but this is the quickest way to just quickly validate that data. And if you notice, all of our line totals have been read and now I just want to go ahead and validate that and now if you notice my invoice total has turned to blue which means all of the line totals plus the shipping amount equals the invoice total so that was automatically built into our business logic as part of this application so that if for some reason it didn't read a value or um, someone went and typed in some wrong information we automatically validate that as part of our business process. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and process this document. And that was the last invoice that we had in our batch. So I'm going to go ahead and process that batch. And if you see, if I go back to the Taskmaster software, this is now ready to be exported. And the next step in the process will be an automated process where we take all of the data that we extracted from the invoices, post that to our ERP system, and then the documents will then be stored in our uh, document management system, which could be found at SharePoint or something along those lines. It could also kick off a workflow process where we can display the data that we extracted, send it to a, a procurement person, and ask them to approve or reject payment for this invoice and then kick the transaction into our ERP system. So you have a lot of options associated with how you can tailor this to your own business process for processing invoices. With that, I'd like to turn it back over to Beatrice. Hope you enjoyed our demonstration. Thanks, Sean. We appreciate that. Um, so now let's talk a little bit about how do customers achieve their ROI goals out uh, when they implement uh, data cap. So with intelligent capture, one of the things you're going to reduce is the cost of transportation. So you can scan these documents remotely and now you don't need to ship them FedEx and or um, any other type of shipment to a central location. You can scan them. They all can be put into one database and then um, you can go in and search them and find them. Uh, you're going to reduce labor costs by eliminating manual data entry and the cost of document capture. Now only the exceptions are being handled instead of each line item or piece of data. Now in the case of medical claims, so you have no errors on social security numbers and patient IDs, so in addition to the ROI you have now gained the added piece of being uh, compliant. 
So um, all documents are now centrally stored and the time to find a document has been reduced from days down to minutes. Uh, there's also the savings when you're scanning. It takes much less time to get documents into the system. So you no longer need to have uh, pages with barcodes scanned to separate documents and documents don't need to be prepped. So this can save an organization up to about 50% of time in capture. Also, now you have the ability to standardize on one vendor, allowing you to reduce license fees and maintenance costs and also allow you for additional volume-based pricing. I'd like to talk to you about our DataCap Quick Start program. We have specific project methodologies that we have utilized that help reduce the risk and speed up deployment of the DataCap product. We have a proven approach that we've used. We've also, you know, find the, we find the gotchas already within this, and so we know how to do this. We've done these many times. We save you time and money by leveraging the pre-configured rules, and um, we also know accounts payable, accounts receivable, and those types of things. So being knowing the business and knowing how to help you with that, our um, quick start program is fixed price, fixed scope, and you get a quick ROI as well. We also have your, da uh, your doc cap assessment. So let's assume that you don't have data cap in or you haven't made that decision yet and you are looking at what do my, what does my documents look like? What do I need to do? Um, how do I get my arms around this project? Um, what is my ROI? Where do I find that? How do I develop business requirements? We can come in and within a two to three week project help you do that and we can help you understand what your business requirements are and understand what your uh, ROI is and also build you a proof of concept so that you can have some of your documents go through the data cap pr process and be able to see that and understand what it's going to look like for you in your environment. Now we'd like to go into our question and answer time here. So um, if anybody has any questions, we'd uh, be happy to uh, take them now. Uh, looks like a couple have come in. So um, we are going to uh, start that time.